Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone to Oz, and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Sunday, the 15th of June 2025. We've got plenty to get through today. Showers and storms over in southeastern Australia. Showers and storms also on the forecast of southwestern Australia, and some moderate to heavy rainfall in places expected across north and far north Queensland. We'll also touch on the long range weather forecast as well. All the details on these weather events plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. But let's get stuck straight into things this morning over in southeastern Australia. We do have that low pressure system that moved through South Australia overnight, bringing in that cool southerly pool that we're seeing this morning, keeping those temperatures quite cool. Uh, and that low pressure system now moving across the border into New South Wales from Victoria. There's some good rainfall associated with this system here. There have been some relatively nice falls between 5 to 15 millimetres across interior parts of New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia. So all in all, this system has been uh, very welcome, that's for sure. Strong winds are now starting to occur across some of the higher peaks, but apart from that, severe weather is not expected from this. Uh, small but uh, quite tight weather system here that's bringing in that much needed rainfall. It's going to pass well to the north of Melbourne which means rainfall into the Melbourne area isn't really expected. There could be a couple of showers here and there and if they're going to occur they're going to occur in the next couple of hours or so. It should clear up a little bit later. Showers still coming in out of the south and the southeast but they're really few and far between. Temperatures have also been kept quite cool across much of South Australia and into parts of Victoria in the wake of this system but temperatures closer towards the east coast of Australia a little bit more milder this morning as a result of this system here. We're only seeing temperatures go down into the low single digits or at freezing uh, across New South Wales and Victoria, even into the high country temperatures just are a little bit uh, more milder than what they have been over the last couple of days, which again has been very nice to see and I imagine a very welcome change for a lot of people this morning. There is going to be more rainfall on the way though, which again will keep those temperatures a little bit more milder. There's nothing in the way of serious rainfall coming through though, which is the good news for southeastern Australia, but further good healthy top up rainfall and just nice soaking rainfall. It's really going to keep things nice nice and damp for the next couple of months is going to be coming through. Later tonight into early tomorrow morning, a weak cold front will basically fall apart before it uh, collects the southern port, uh, southern corner of South Australia before moving into the southeast corner of Victoria with a few showers and maybe the odd storm here and there through tomorrow and into tomorrow afternoon. Snow expected on the high peaks down to an elevation of about 1,500 metres through Victoria and New South Wales. Snowy mountains region through Monday night into early Tuesday morning. Some good rainfall expected across the north and the west coast of Tasmania. Good falls also expected along the Bass straight coastline from Monday night into Tuesday morning but all in all this one is not going to be bringing too much in the way of significant rainfall to any areas that are more than about 15 kilometers away from the coastline. The heaviest falls will be for coastal based locations even Melbourne isn't expecting too much rainfall between Monday and Tuesday just a few drops here and there. Rainfall then ease off temporarily for pretty much everywhere apart from Tasmania through Wednesday and into Thursday expecting more rainfall to come through Tasmania's way on Wednesday and into Thursday but then that rainfall returns much later on into the forecast period with the passage of a another cold front out to about the 22nd or the 23rd of June. This one could pack a punch. The wind behind it as well out to about the 24th or the 25th of June could also pack a punch. And then as we were talking about yesterday, we've got that East Coast low type system that's now on the forecast to form offshore from New South Wales. This deserves a couple of minutes, so I'll get back to this system very shortly. But all in all, some good rainfall, plenty of cold front activity coming through in the next 14 days, probably about four or five individual systems coming through throughout the remainder of June. So further rainfall is expected and it is going to be that good, healthy, soaking rainfall that we've really been desperate for across southeastern Australia. Here's a look at the rainfall accumulations, looking very healthy on the forecast modelling here. Coastal regions expecting an abundance of rainfall into the next 14 days. Falls could be as high as 50 millimetres between Sejuna down to Port Lincoln on the west coast, the Eyre Peninsula. Unfortunately, though, rainfall into South Australia's pastoral regions isn't expected to be anything too crazy. Between 5 to 25 millimetres is expected up to around the Wyala and the Port Lincoln area. Uh, Adelaide looking at up to about 25 millimetres of rainfall, and then even down into the Murray River country and into the southeast corner of South Australia, rainfall accumulations between 10 to 25 millimetres is what we're kind of expecting there. So nothing too crazy at this point in time. Widespread falls across much of Victoria between 5 to 25 millimetres. Heavier falls expected into some of the more hillier and then the more mountainous regions. Falls could be as high as 50 to even 75 millimetres across the high country in Victoria and also New South Wales. And a further 25 millimetres expected into uh, uh, up to 25 millimetres expected today for locations into the high country as that weak cold front system makes its passage through. Again, very healthy rainfall. Very, very happy to see this on the forecast modelling. Good rainfall expected for the west coast of Tasmania, not as great as what it was on yesterday's forecast run, but we're still looking at between 100 to 150 millimetres across parts of the west coast, and good falls expected into the north coast as well, Launceston looking at up to 50 millimetres of rainfall as well. 
And I hope that answers all of your questions to the weather situation over in Southeast Australia. Let's turn things a little bit more subtropical over later on into the forecast period. Late June, we are looking at the potential for a system offshore from New South Wales. Now, the long range weather forecasts have been suggesting something uh, brewing here in the Tasman Sea closer to the Australian side as opposed to the New Zealand side into the last couple of days of June, probably into the last week of June, to be honest, between the 23rd out to about the 27th or the 28th of June. We're expecting something to develop offshore from New South Wales. Now, whether that turns out to be a rainfall event that careens further south into the uh, Tasman Sea down towards New Zealand or one that goes into the New South Wales coastline and creates a pretty significant problem over there. We're still not 100% sure but what we do know is if something was to form which is looking highly likely at this time it's going to have to make the most of some very very healthy sea temperatures. Forecast modelling right now suggests a low pressure system that was once an extra tropical cyclone to move through into the Tasman Sea and then get its act together that way bringing showers, strong winds and heavy rainfall by the looks of things onto the back side of the system here. Not an awful lot of impacts expected for the New South Wales coastline and it's pushed forward pretty quickly by a great Australian bite high pressure system before this system moves deeper out into the Tasman Sea, in fact right out towards New Zealand by the looks of things out into the last couple of days of June. Further long range forecast modelling, the GFS is calling for pretty much the exact same thing actually as what the European forecast modelling is calling for. So if we contrast the GFS and the East Middle Earth forecast, they are neck and neck. I know it doesn't look exactly the same and if you're a first time viewer, uh, you're probably thinking, what am I talking about that is far from identical but when we've got systems with such great certainty 10 days out that really does mean something and the fact that the GFS and the European forecast model both have the pretty much the exact same thing they've got the exact same weather event in generally speaking the same location at the same time with the same uh, pressure the same intensity that really does mean something so if this is a one run uh, fluke from the forecast modeling then uh, we'll wait and see in tomorrow morning's forecast update the access is a little bit more, more going off on its own way it's still calling for that strong low pressure system into the Tasman Sea but in much more of an extra tropical nature but yes yeah, certainly something worth watching now into the Tasman Sea long range models have been suggesting a wet end to June and a wet start to July for quite a while now so I definitely reckon that the Tasman Sea and the east coast of New South Wales is a place that's going to have to be on notice over the next couple of weeks and I'm, that's why I'm going into quite uh, great detail about this because they have had some pretty significant flooding problems <laughs> And again, we've always got our old mate, the sea temperatures. They're still piping hot offshore from the New South Wales, mid-north coast and into the northern rivers. They're not as warm as you would expect further south. They're a little bit closer to normal for this time of the year, 19 pushing 20 degrees Celsius offshore from Naruma and Oladulla. So rainfall isn't going to be as much of a problem down here. Also, they haven't had one in a century floods down there in the last couple of months. So rainfall accumulations down in this part of New South Wales won't necessarily be as bad. But rainfall accumulations anywhere north of Newcastle could present a really big problem because, again, those sea temperatures are very, very warm, and the further north you get, the warmer they are going to get as well. So a rainfall event uh, is just not going to be good news at all, considering the flooding impacts that have occurred across the mid-north coast of New South Wales, but coupling that with some very warm sea temperatures and a generally speaking favourable environment uh, trend that we've seen over the last couple of months, we could have a very big fish to fry offshore from the New South Wales coastline if we see a rainfall event develop. Again, it is still a question of ifs and buts. We're looking long range at this point in time, but considering the long range forecast modelling have set it for quite a while, and we've been looking at this system here from the, both the GFS and the East Rural F forecast modelling now for the last couple of days, I do definitely reckon that this forecast now has a little bit more merit than what some other forecasts do, do have. And again, uh, whether we see it, we're, we're definitely going to see a system in the Tasman Sea, but whether we see a significant New South Wales impact, it's still a little bit out there for the oceans to decide, and a few more flip flops on the forecast, I can imagine. So stay tuned in the next couple of of days. Rainfall is also expected from tomorrow onwards up in far north Queensland and across north Queensland in general. Plenty of cloud developing over into the uh, Coral Sea at this point in time. It's this cloud band here that's going to begin to develop uh, over into the west coast of Queensland. Now you can already see a couple of drops of rainfall embedded here and there outside of Tea Tree and then across to north of Alice Springs down towards Bedora and Bullia into the western corner of Queensland. Uh, this cloud band here not carrying anything in the way of significant rainfall accumulations obviously right now but it is going to be heading across the uh, country and we're expecting to move into Queensland through today into tomorrow and then meet up with some moisture coming in from the southeast over on the Coral Sea. It's very difficult to see on this forecast model the track of this cloud band but trust me we're going to see it move over Queensland over the next couple of days and then through Monday night into Tuesday morning we're expecting rainfall which could be moderate to heavy at times especially as you get further north of about Croydon and Georgetown and Forsyth into the far northern reaches of Queensland and the Cape York Peninsula. We could be seeing some very good rainfall accumulations materialise there through Monday night into Tuesday morning. Rainfall will be at its heaviest 
impervious through Tuesday morning, and we are expecting some isolated pockets of heavy rainfall. A lot of widespread moderate rainfall, and then even more widespread light moderate rainfall is expected across the north coast of Queensland. It should clear through Tuesday, and these showers and storms will then get progressively further offshore by the looks of things. And then it's just going to be a couple of showers out of the southeast, continuing for the Castro Coast and into the Daintree Rainforest through the second last, and then even in towards the last week of June. And we could be seeing some healthy rainfall accumulations pipe up there as a result. We have had, we have seen uh, this morning a significant uptick in the amount of rainfall expected on the European forecast modelling here, and even the GFS is now calling for a substantially greater amount of rainfall to be occurring on the forecast modelling at this point in time. Rainfall accumulations have had a pretty substantial bump from yesterday, so let's break that down for you right now. Three-day rainfall accumulations between the 16th to the 18th of June, including Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So heavier falls expected as we get further south of where we were expecting the heaviest rainfall to be across the Cape York Peninsula, so locations such as Townsville, Bow and the Whit Sunday as Mackay, and even right down towards Ogmore and Rockhampton and Yapoon, could be looking at 50 millimetres of rainfall or even more. The heaviest falls, like I said, through the Cape York Peninsula, up to 100 or even 150 millimetres expected there. The Caspary Coast also expecting between 50 to 100 millimetres of rainfall, but like I said, some good falls could be now on the cards around the Townsville, Bowen and Whit Sundays area, especially. And I'm talking about rainfall accumulations between 40 to 80 millimetres here through Tuesday morning. It is still quite hard to tell at this point in time. This is a very out of season and unusual weather event and sea temperatures aren't really playing a big role at this point in time in how much rainfall is expected to fall not to mention that they're not exactly bath water warm anymore offshore from Queensland in fact into the southern reaches of the Gulf of Carpentaria because of the freezing cold nights that they've been having across there sea temperatures now have now dropped below 20 degrees so they're not really a big factor in play here it depends on what moisture comes off the coral sea at this point in time if we have a very strong southeasterly flow meet up with this weather system here which is what's now looking a little bit more likely we could be seeing some pretty decent rainfall rainfall accumulations develop. I think I'm going to have some answers on this system through Monday night into early Tuesday morning in terms of what we're expecting here, so stay tuned on the Facebook page for further updates on this system. At this point in time, it is still just a little bit too uncertain, and it's really got me scratching my head at this point in time at exactly what rainfall is going to be coming through for what locations. This is a highly unusual weather event here. It does happen every now and then, but again, still, it is very unusual, even for this part of Queensland, which does see rainfall or can see heavy rainfall pretty much year-round. So we'll just have to wait and see and kind of play it by ear and see what rainfall does begin to develop on the forecast modelling. As you'd expect, no rainfall over the Northern Territory and even parts of the interior Western Australia into the next 14 days. We might see a couple of Northwestern cloud bands develop, especially through Tuesday with the passage of a strong cold front coming through, which could bring heavy falls as far north as Geraldton or even Calbarry over in the next couple of days. But some good rainfall generally expected across the southwest corner of Western Australia into the next 14 days. We had a weak frontal system just pass through the Perth metro area, started off recording this video with a few showers, and there is a little bit of rainfall moving through into the uh, next couple of hours as well. So it could be a wet start depending on where you are in the southwest this morning. Apart from that, rainfall expected to keep itself out of the southwest for the most part in the next couple of days. We will see a return to the showers and the rainfall, which could be heavy at times through Monday night into early Tuesday morning. The heavier falls returning uh, through Tuesday night into early Wednesday morning, all things considered. And we could be seeing some isolated heavy rainfall, especially further north up the coastline if we see that cutoff low pressure system develop and get itself offshore, uh, really situated in the Lewin Currents, very warm sea temperatures at this point in time. This is a pretty big change in the forecast modelling, not so much in terms of rainfall accumulations, but just in terms of the type of weather system that we're now expecting to develop here. It looks like there's going to be an embedded low pressure system or an embedded cutoff low pressure system that's going to move in with this low pressure system on Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. And if that really does separate itself, it's going to have some pretty dramatic ramifications, some rainfall accumulations. It could drag the heaviest rainfall out of the Perth metro area and a lot further north and bring it up, up towards 30 or 40 millimetres further north of the Perth metro area. It's an unusual weather system System again if that was to occur and I reckon this is going to stay more of a classic cold front at this point in time with a strong rain band coupled with a couple of strong wind gusts and then some showers behind it I think that's exactly how the system's going to remain but it will have some heavier than usual rainfall or heavier than typical rainfall compared to what we would normally see from a winter front and of course that is again boiled back down to the sea temperatures which we've been looking at in great detail every single day for the last couple of days still pushing 23 there's a loop current well offshore from the West Australian coastline Jury and Bay pushing 24 even 25 degrees in pockets here up around the Calbarry region. So again, very warm sea temperatures, plenty of 
of evaporation and these cold fronts are going to really make the most fit by the looks of things. And again, rainfall accumulation is looking pretty good over the next 14 days as well. Heavy falls expected across the south coastal regions between Augusta down to Albany, up to 100 millimetres expected there, and then falls between 10 to 50 millimetres expected through much of the word body. But again, rainfall accumulations have been knocked down a little bit. If we are going to see some good rainfall accumulations into the Weird Belt region, the majority of them are going to come through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Uh, the best rainfall will be occurring through Tuesday with the passage of that frontal system. And again, I do believe that that is exactly how the forecast is going to pan out at this point in time in reality. But it is still a little bit too early and again, a little bit too difficult to tell. It always leaves me scratching my head when we see some major discrepancies between the two major forecast models, the East Mlef and the GFS. I know I generally rely on the East Mlef for these forecast uh, videos, but uh, uh, again, equally, both forecast models play a significant role in creating these forecast updates. So yeah, we're going to have to wait and see what this frontal system does do here. I'll have some updates on the Facebook page because at this point in time, this is quite an interesting weather system, that's for sure. And it could pack a little bit of a punch for the southwest corner and especially into the midwest coastline as well. It looks like there is going to be some good rainfall accumulations coming through there, up around the 25 or even up towards the 40 millimeter mark. Further rainfall coming through on the 20th and the 21st of June. Rainfall expected to be following behind it in a series of cold fronts before West Australia dries out a little bit under the influence of some strong high pressure systems into the last week of June. It looks like the first week of July, though, will return in a bit of a wet fashion, or at least out towards the end of the first week of July. So whilst there's not a lot of rainfall expected into the uh, second or the, um, not the second week, into the second last and the last weeks of June across the southwest of WA, it looks like July could start off fairly wet over in Western Australia. On that note, that is going to have to do it for today's forecast update. I do hope you've enjoyed it or found the video informative. And if you have, then please do consider leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not really show without them. And again, their support is, of course, much appreciated. That'll be all for me today. And I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.